My name's Byron Kennedy. I'm the team leader of Team Solar Dog. Uh, why are you doing that? Because of the technical challenges. I've been involved in solar car racing since uh, 1996. I've uh, been involved in the SunSwift solar car team, then I was involved in the, the solar car team at the Northern Territory University. I've been interested in solar vehicles uh, since 1985. Uh, when we started building the car for Dick Smith. Uh, at that stage, uh, a solar race had been proposed and um, that race was to go from Darwin to Adelaide, 3,000 kilometres across the centre of Australia. No one's been to the South Pole in a vehicle like this before. So, uh, so we got together with people at work, with people I know, and we said, let's do this. You know, it, it's, it is feasible, it is, is technically very challenging, but it's something that can be achieved. In 1987, when we built our car, uh, the best solar panels that we could get were about 14% efficient. Uh, now it's possible to get commercially available solar panels that are more than twice as efficient, 30% efficient. I don't think it will be another 20 years before we see possibly 60% efficient solar panels. In parallel with that, of course, has been the development in batteries and power electronics and motors, uh, all of which have become much more efficient and much more reliable. And so it's now, I think, possible and sensible to conceive of, of something as challenging as this solar dog project, uh, where you take all of this technology and put it into the harshest possible environment. This is something that's never been achieved in a solar vehicle like this, so where the solar panel is built onto the vehicle. I'm saying goodbye to my beautiful little solar dog after about 10 years, and it's going to be great to see that it uh, might end up at the South Pole. This is the, the most uh, isolated continent in the world. My own research has been uh, based at these uh, high altitude sites. Uh, South Pole itself is fairly high, it's about 2,800 metres above sea level. I think there's a lot of things that can go very seriously wrong. It's cold, uh, there's no one nearby if, uh, if things do go wrong, so uh, the team are going to have to be very self-reliant. Well, breaking down is the hazard that you want to avoid, um, and particularly uh, close to the coast, there's the potential for, for blizzards. Although there are huge challenges in building a vehicle to travel across Antarctica, uh, there's also huge advantages. Uh, one of them being that, of course, in the summertime, you've got uh, continuous daylight. You can see this panel here, it, is, it has a very high tilt on it. The, the sun is about 23 degrees in the sky, so it's about this angle. And so we run for six hours when the sun is on this angle. We stop when the sun comes around in the front. We bring the panel down, it's on a tilting frame here comes over this side, we run for another six hours. As you get inland and closer to the pole, uh, the wind drops um, down to very low levels indeed, so you can be sure of, uh, of low wind speeds. On the other hand, of course, there's the very low temperatures that uh, could easily get down to minus 35 or minus 40 Celsius. So that's one of the beauties of a solar vehicle. We, we actually get increased performance from the solar array when it's colder. And the snow, the fact that uh, this vehicle is going to have to travel across what could be quite thick and soft snow. And uh, that's going to require some careful design of the, of the tyres and the suspension. If we look at the motors, the motors are all the industrial permanent magnet motors. They're, they're robust, they're reliable. The basic design that um, is there is a, is a very sound one with uh, the six wheels and each on its own independent suspension. It has to be light, it has to be very strong and it has to be simple because uh, it's much easier to fix a, a broken simple thing than it is to fix a broken complicated thing. So the terrain is very tough uh, and the conditions are very tough and, and you know if you break down, if something happens you need to be able to fix it. So you need to be able to fix things very easily uh, because you know, the, there is no one else down there to fix a vehicle like this if something does go wrong. It's worth remembering that it's only a hundred years since uh, the very first people went to the South Pole. So a um, hundred years later, here is a team doing essentially the same thing, uh, but this time powered by solar energy rather than by horses or dogs. And uh, we're all hoping that they will make it safely back to base. <laughs>